we are are saturated in a protein obsessed environment, which is the, the funniest thing about it is it's the nutrient we need the least. It's the macronutrient that we need the least for survival. And that will never change. It's a fact. And the protein is in the foods that you think are carbohydrates, just as much as the carbohydrates that you think are quote unquote bad, typically half of those types of carbohydrates, which are cookies, cakes, our pastries, our chips, half of them are made with a half half cup of butter or oil. So half of your portion is fat as it is, but they're getting slammed as being carbs and unhealthy, which is fair enough. You know, they're added sugars and they're added fats. But when when we use the word carbohydrate, what I really hope is part of what mastering diabetes does is it 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 changes the language. And the language is such a big deal in this low carb world we've been in for so long because the language that carbohydrates are not the bad guys, they're actually the good guys when we look at them in the position that they are. And, and by the way, I, I, I can't, I cannot seem to emphasize enough just to healthcare folks that by the way, veggies are carbs, guys, vegetables are carbohydrates. The spinach is a carb. Um, it's the truest form of carbohydrate, actually. There's no added fat there at all. It's the wholest form of carbohydrate, right? And the beans and, and the wild rice and these native foods that are so rich and like culturally appropriate and relevant, they're getting slammed as being not good for you. So it just steamrolls into a lot of different things because of that language. Yeah, such a good point. And, um, and that's why it's so important that we use the phrase whole food carbohydrate when we explain our methodology, which is to eat the foods in our green light category that are so rich in not just carbohydrate energy, but also fiber and minerals and vitamins. They're packed with these nutrient dense, like um, fruits and vegetables are some of the most nutrient dense foods you can put into your body. And so they're restorative. They're offering, you know, these phytochemicals for cellular repair, for cancer fighting or prevention of cancer. I mean, there's just so many amazing benefits to the foods that are in our green light list. And that's what we, you know, are coaching people towards eating more and more and more of. Um, And one thing to kind of point out too, and, and the way that I see it is like every food that you put into your body has some proportion of carbohydrate, fat, and protein. And the way, the reason that that's important is that you're never eating a food in a single macronutrient like there's some proportion. Now the proportion may be very close to zero, like as in the case with like animal products, like, you know, a piece of meat is fat and primarily fat and protein and very zero to very, 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 very small amount of carbohydrate. No fiber. There's absolutely no no fiber fiber. in those. (laughs) (laughs) No fiber for sure. So, right. And so it's funny you say that because I always talk about fiber being, fiber being the fourth macronutrient. And when you look at our meal plans, for example, all of our recipes include fiber on the meal plan so that people can really see just how much fiber they're getting in each meal as well, because it is such an important, truly macronutrient, although it's not one of the three that we think of when it comes to our dietary strategies up front. Mm-hmm. That, um, you know, Kylie, with you saying that, yeah, I feel like listeners might have a question. I feel like yeah. a question that might be brewing is, well, hold on a second. How come we've all been taught to eat low carb? Where did it come from? If it's that clear that fiber is a good guy, that all these vegetables are great, we know that, eat fruits and veggies, right? But then how come we have all been told if it's type one, type two, or pre-diabetes prevention, why are we still told to eat low carb? Well, that is the question almost circling back to the beginning where you're talking about the fact that there's noise, there's variability. So when you are living in that insulin resistant state, you've developed type two diabetes, you've been eating a higher fat diet, diet, a dietary strategy that's much higher in fat, and you start developing insulin resistance in the background of your body, you come along and eat that one carbohydrate rich food and you're going to get variability in your blood glucose. It's just, unfortunately, that's an inevitability initially. And that variability just scares everybody, (laughs) right? So maybe- Yeah, the short-term thinking, right? It's the short-term thinking. If we start now to your, now like next step of that is like, if we're going to go from the short-term thinking to the long-term thinking, which is, okay, I accept I'm going to have some variability at the beginning of this process. We know there are things that you can do to help minimize the variability. And if you know what those things are, which, you know, there's a number of different tools and strategies that we teach our clients how to reduce some of that variability. But once you break through some of that background insulin resistance, 
then that's when things get really fun and the fruit becomes a really great strategy and reward for all for what you're doing. And the way that, you know, we've really seen this play out is when we host our retreats. It is, it's not, it doesn't take, I mean, you were trying to talk about long-term strategy. I mean, this takes days. <laughs> like we're not talking super long term here, right? Um, we've seen people come, you know, some of our clients come to our retreats. We used to host them in person. We'd love to get back to that, by the way. Um, you know, that's in the works, but we had to take a break from in-person hosting during, you know, COVID times. Um, but now, um, but we've hosted online and virtual retreats as well. And the outcomes are absolutely remarkable. And it's so awesome to help somebody, to see somebody come into our retreat. They maybe they have or haven't been already eating a low fat strategy, but it doesn't matter because they come in and on day one, we start them on a green light food. So we feed during our retreats. We actually, well, in-person retreats, we feed our members, you know, the whole time and it's fruits, tropical fruits, lots of greens. Um, we'll do beans. We'll do some, um, sometimes some potatoes or something like that. But it, you know, the, the menu is very consistent. It's hundred percent green light, no oil, no salt, no sugar. It is very clear. And I mean, people's blood glucose numbers on by day two, three, and four are just plummeting. You know, they're coming down in whether they're living with type two diabetes, type one diabetes, if they're injecting insulin, they're using much less insulin at the end of the search at the end of four days. Like, so you're, you know, we talk about this idea of thinking in the long term. If, if long term, if four days is long term to you, then, you know, that's okay. Just know that four days will be enough time if you eat a green light strategy for four days straight. And that it's like is the, the all in approach. The, yeah. the all in approach, like, just like, let's just do this. Test it out. I mean, that's yeah. one, one way of going about it for sure. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, you know, some people are okay with that. Like, I always, I like to, it's not always the easiest way. That's why having a meal plan, if you can like take a weekend away for yourself, like almost think of it. And I've sort of challenged some of my clients to this in the past where I'm like, could you just take one weekend where you just go and say, you know what? I'm going to pretend like I'm on a retreat. I'm just going to pretend like in my home, I have a toddler at, at home. So of course, like we're playing pretend all the time. Like let's pretend to do this. Let's pretend we're going to take this, make these pretend soup or whatever. Um, so like, let's just pretend for the weekend, like you're on a retreat. Let's pretend that we are feeding you, but I'm just going to give you this meal plan. Follow these meals, eat these exact foods for the next four days straight. Eat as much of them as you want. Don't worry about the volume of food because we want you to be full and satisfied. And inevitably, you know, they're messaging me, oh my gosh, I need to adjust my blood glucose or my um, insulin. You know, I have to lower my insulin again. I have to lower my insulin again. Like it's unbelievable how much information you can get about your body if you can go it all in and do this for three or four days in a row. It, it becomes very clear that carbohydrates are not the problem. 